What? So for this morning, I drove uh, three hours down to a ranch to qualify them for a hormone-free program. And now I'm an hour back the other way, have some post-mortems to do, and after the post-mortems, uh, we have a producer meeting, which I will be speaking at as well. I'm at the feedlot now. I was kind of open for like two or three deads today. It's like 12. I'm kind of in a rush. I don't want to go in the mud. It's going to snow. At least it could just get cold out. Just the cold is better than the mud. I'm putting on my coveralls in the truck. So I don't fall in the mud. My GoPro is dead. So I'm going to leave you guys in the truck. Because I don't want to get this camera wet. I'm trying to take better care of my equipment. And then I'll open them all up. And then I'll come get the GoPro. And show you guys the pathology. Okay? All right, all right, all right. It's actually kind of nice out. Ready, boy? Ready? Want it? Want it? Want it? Ready? Ready? Go! Get it! I think my GoPro is pretty well charged. I'm just still cutting deads. and we got into any pathology yet. Trying out this new axe to cut the ribs. It's really sharp. Kind of like it. Separative bronchi pneumonia. Okay, that guy had a rectal prolapse that was in the process of being amputated. The reason why he prolapsed is he had a cystitis. So this is his bladder. You can see it's really thickened. The reason he has cystitis. It's because he had a pyelonephritis or a kidney infection. So kidney infection causing the bladder infection. Could have been the bladder infection ascending up causing the pyelonephritis. That's true. And then it could have uh, had a lot of I guess discomfort of the bladder, kidney pain. That's probably why he was pushing and pushing and pushing and pushed his, his rectal prolapse out. So that's the inciting cause of the prolapse. Prolapses don't, prolapses don't just happen, you know. Something's gotta happen. I'm not sure if I'm a fan of this. It's gag, keep, keeps gagging me. I hope the footage is good. Did you see that he was a little bit pale? Like his trachea, his esophagus, his lungs, everything just seemed pale. Now, I wasn't too sure what to think about that because I kept looking at that foot, or this foot, and I saw that he had this really bad arthritis that had blown out, and that was probably the reason that he was euthanized. But I continued my thorough routine post-mortem examination, and when I got to the cecum, I usually go like large intestines first, it exploded melina or digested blood. It was smelly, iron smelling, just loads and loads of blood all up his intestinal tract until I got to the abomasum. Now in the rumen reticulum and omasum there was no blood at all so there was something going on in the abomasum. I was looking for an ulcer, looking, 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 and I came across this. This is lodged into his stomach. It's a whole bunch of wires. See that? 
a whole bunch of like copper wires. I don't know if that's from a tire tread. I don't know if they're copper actually. But this thing of wires was lodged in his stomach. And where it was lodged was right here. This is the abomasomycosa. You can see there's this decent sized ulcer that eroded through the mucosa into the blood supply and he was bleeding out. So hematochesia in the abomasum, that's the frank red blood. And then as it goes through the intestines, it gets digested and it turns into the black blood. And that is melina. So we're gonna have coccidiosis where the blood is not digested but is made in the cecum or the large intestine. The, the blood back there is red. So coccidiosis blood is red because it comes from the large intestine. The ulcer blood is black because it gets digested and you're like digesting your own blood. That's also why he was pale because he's anemic because he's bleeding out. But he was shot because he had an arthritis. I guess that's why you do that uh, post-mortem. This is a lung. There's a cut cross-section. This is a chronic fibrinous pneumonia. So there's still fibrous pneumonia going on here. There's the bread and butter lesions. These also chronic, there's lots of fibrosis. Probably menheimia. Just chronic failure to respond to treatment or missed by the pen riders. Well, hello, handsome. How you doing? It is uh, 6 p.m. I've been on the road for a long time today. Now I am showing up to the community hall out in the country and this is where we're going to be having our producer meeting. It is a right proper winter storm out. We probably should have cancelled this. Look at this. This is horrendous out. This goat trail is the gravel road to the hall. And then the four got stuck and the four got stuck and then pulled out the four. So the ugly and we'll start backwards. The ugly is probably around this area and I know a lot of the clients that work with Eastern Alberta, they don't have bank grass going into winter. You're going to get a big, big chunk of pie or a big salad. You're going to get calories both ways, but you're going to get really a lot faster eating pie. She is going to be older, more mature, more likely to be cycling, more likely to and calve in the first 21 day cycle herself. Stayed in the herd longer, and on average, it took them one more year before they came up open. That's Cody's talk on antimicrobial, what, is there something on our face? Antimicrobial regulations. We super appreciate Dr. Matt setting us up here. Uh, he's been a joy to have at our practice. Uh, he came through Vet Agri Health Services, yeah, as a student in, what, 2014? Yeah, in 2014, and we certainly couldn't wait to get him back. I think we kind of had a, a mutual agreement that whenever he was going to come back home that we would hire him, so we've just been waiting and waiting, and it's been great to have him back. Certainly, we have some long-standing relationships in the area. Health Canada announced uh, effective December 1st, 2018, that all antimicrobials that we use in animals will be required to have a prescription. Location of the Cleveland Police a decade earlier. This time, the city promised things would be different. In 2015, they entered into a consent decree. Made it home, finished the day, survived the roads. Thank you to all the producers that came out to the meeting. You risked your lives in the name of education. <laughs> I like in here.
out of my gas hole. <laughs>